In today's video, we'll be talking about one of the newest and perhaps the least understood automatic transmissions on the market. It is right here under the hood of this 2015 Honda Pilot Elite model, and it is ZF's new 9-speed automatic transmission. The reason we're taking a look under the hood of the Honda Pilot is because this vehicle can be had with either Honda's 6-speed automatic or this ZF designed 9-speed automatic transmission. Now because the Pilot has the 6-speed automatic or a 9-speed automatic, you can actually test drive them back to back and tell the difference between this and what I would call your traditional 6-speed automatic transaxle. Now this 9-speed automatic is an automatic transaxle technically because it combines the front axle as well as the transmission in one casing and it's made for a front-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive vehicle. That means it's made for engines that are sitting across the engine bay in this manner, and that's very different than ZF's other automatic transmissions. Now, I mention that because a lot of the misunderstanding comes in the fact that people are used to ZF transmissions feeling a certain way, and this 9-speed does not necessarily feel like that because it's not really the same design at all. Most of ZS transmissions are designed for rear-wheel drive vehicles where the engine is north-south in the vehicle, and of course there's an awful lot more length and an awful lot more room for the transmission in that style of vehicle. Now let's talk about this 9-speed automatic transmission by itself. This transmission has a very wide gear ratio spread, and that's the difference between the lowest ratio in the gearbox and the highest ratio in the gearbox. This ratio spread is approximately 9.8, which is a very, very broad ratio spread. General Motors' old 4-speed automatic transmissions had a ratio spread of around 3 or so. Their current 6-speed automatic transmissions have a ratio spread of around 6. That's pretty average for 6-speeds in the industry. That means that when you compare this to that average 6-speed automatic transmission, 1st gear is much lower and ninth gear is much higher. That allows manufacturers to do two things that are normally contradictory with one another improve performance and improve highway fuel economy at the same time. Of course, the final variation there is the final drive ratio in the vehicle. When you multiply the final drive ratio times that gear ratio in that gear first, second, third, whatever, then you get the actual total gear ratio in the vehicle. And in this Honda Pilot, Honda has tuned the vehicle more towards the acceleration side. When you take a look at the MDX and the Pilot with the 9-speed automatic transmission, first gear is approximately 20 to 1 total. That's quite low compared to the competition, and that's why this vehicle is about half a second faster 0 to 60 than the Pilot with the 6-speed automatic transmission, because its first gear is approximately 15 to 1 or so. Now, even though first gear is lower, ninth gear is still higher than sixth gear, so the engine is actually spinning slower, for instance, at 70 miles an hour than you would be if it had the six-speed automatic transmission, therefore yielding you better. Also something different with this particular transmission is that fifth gear is the gear that's one to one, so one revolution of the input shaft equals one revolution of the output shaft. That means this has four overdrive ratios, which is quite a lot. That's because this transmission was designed with the European market in mind, and vehicles with this transmission and a gear ratio set that is more along the lines of the Jeep Cherokee will see higher fuel economy at higher speeds. If you take a look at the Jeep Cherokee, certain versions of it won't use ninth gear until you're over 80 miles an hour. And that's really not a situation that you would see in the United States. However, in Europe, that means that if you're on the Autobahn, it's giving you much better fuel economy at those high speeds. So the transmission has a lot of gears and it has some really wide ratios. Why does it shift the way that it does? Well, it's all down to the way that they packaged nine ratios into this transmission. Automatic transmissions use planetary gear sets. I'll pop a picture over here on the side so you can see how that works. Now, by stacking planetary gear sets and moving the power from one pack to the other, that's how you change effective ratios. Now, transmissions change those ratios with either clutch packs or bands. Bands are tending to fall out of favor these days. Most of them use clutch packs. Now, like a manual transmission, clutch packs are not on-off things. They actually do vary because you can slip the clutch, and that allows you to engage the next gear without completely removing the power from the previous gear. That's why most automatic transmissions, especially when you're downshifting, you don't get that feel of being in neutral like you would with the manual transmission, because all they're simply doing is releasing one clutch pack, engaging another clutch pack, etc. So while they may reduce engine power, they don't generally shift to neutral. So that's where you get that slowing down sort of rubber bandy feel as you then engage the next gear, and then you're slowing down. Now, this transmission uses clutch packs like that, but it also uses dog clutches, and dog clutches are positive engagement clutches. They're, they actually have teeth that mesh. So instead of two discs sliding against one another, friction surfaces slowly engaging, and then the two sides are rotating at the same rate, 
This transmission doesn't do that. It actually has two clutches that actually have teeth and the transmission actually has to mesh these teeth together. The problem with that style of clutch is that it requires an awful lot more precision and that's why we haven't really seen them in transmissions up till this point because you actually have to get the teeth to align and then engage. That means you have to align that spinning motion one side to the other. That also means you basically have to shift to neutral for a while in this transmission. Now, not every gear shift occurs that way. Just gear shift four to five and then gear shift seven to eight. Those two shifts feel different than every other shift in this transmission. That means that gear shifts one to two, two to three, three to four, all feel normal. They feel very much like every other transmission out there. Gear shift four to five will take a little bit longer than most transmissions out there. Then gear shift five to six and six to seven feel normal. Then the gear shift from seven to eight feels different than every other transmission. And then the shift from eight to nine feels the same. Now on the way down, that same thing is going on, but in a way that is more noticeable, especially if you're using those sport paddle shifters on the vehicles that have them. Because if you're going from gear four to three, for instance, it's going to feel more like a traditional automatic. You can get that little rubber bandy feel as the clutch pack engages in the next gear. You don't get a lot of freewheeling feeling. But if you're going from gear five to gear four, it's going to feel different because the transmission has to basically shift to neutral, align those teeth, engage the clutch, and then it can go into the next gear. That can feel a little bit disconcerting because if you're rolling down a hill and you're driving in a sporty fashion, you engage that shift, you get this neutral feeling, then you get perhaps a rev match from the engine depending on how the manufacturer's programmed everything, and then you get that next gear. Now it's a little bit less noticeable in the Honda Pilot than it is in something like the Chrysler 200 or the Jeep Cherokee, but it's exactly the same feeling because it's basically the same transmission. Now the last thing to know about this transmission, of course, is that it has more gears than everything else out there. So it has 50% more gears than a six speed automatic. So by the time you go from zero to 65 in this particular vehicle, you've used 50% more gears than you would get in the same car with the six speed. Because the gear ratios are so advantageous, especially down there at the starting gear ratios, this is still faster, even though it is shifting more. Now, many of you on Facebook have asked, why don't they just use a CVT? Why bother with the nine speed automatic transmission? It's all about that gear ratio spread as well as torque handling capability. This style of transmission can handle more torque than the average CVT. There is a little bit of concern with high torque and CVTs because the belt can slip on those pulleys. The pulleys are also a problem because there's just not enough room in most transmission casings to make pulleys with diameters different enough in order to achieve the same kind of ratio spread we get in this transmission. Again, this is very broad from first to ninth gear. It's a really, really big delta between the two. In most CVT designs, we would actually need a multi-speed automatic transmission with planetary gear sets either before or after the CVT module in order to give you that kind of ratio spread. That's exactly what we see in something like a Nissan Versa, where it actually has a CVT with that belt and pulley design, and then it has a two-speed automatic transmission jammed inside the same case. The two-speed automatic transmission starts in low, basically, and then the CVT varies from low to high, and then it switches over to high speed in that two-speed transmission and then the belt resets again and goes from low to high, therefore giving you a larger range. Now even that transmission doesn't have a range as large as this 9-speed. It's a little bit closer to your average 7-speed. The difference is really obvious when we take a look at the Nissan Pathfinder, which is a good parallel to this Honda Pilot. The Nissan CVT's low starting ratio is not nearly as low as the starting ratio on the 6-speed Pilot, and it's an awful lot higher than the starting ratio on this 9-speed unit that we have here. So Nissan had to choose between sporty acceleration, especially at the low end, or good fuel economy out on the highway, and they chose fuel economy on the highway. Honda did not have to choose with this 9-speed automatic because it does both. Now, a lot of you also asked me to prognosticate, and I suspect that we probably will see more CVTs with multi-speed automatic transmissions jammed in the same case because it just makes logical sense. You would then get most of the benefit of a CVT with a little bit of reduction because you'd have to go through that planetary gear set, but you would get that expanded ratio. Now, what vehicles would we see that in? We probably won't be seeing that in SUVs like this. We probably will be seeing that in small cars, compact sedans, possibly mid-size sedans, generally not vehicles with towing in mind. 
The reason for that is again because we have that potential for slipping in that belt and cone arrangement. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. This has been the 2016 Honda Pilot. I do encourage you to check out the Pilot if you're interested in the difference between this 9-speed automatic and your average 6-speed. I love the ability to compare vehicles. This is an excellent test bed for that because you can find it again with the 6-speed or the 9-speed depending on the model that you get and they're right next to each other on the dealer lots, almost identical other than that. In the meantime, go ahead and check out the complete review on the 2016 Honda Pilot also on my channel and I'll see you next week.